Hi, I'm Michael. Today, we're gonna make these illuminated fiber optic table numbers for a wedding. Let's get started. My sister's fiance proposed to her in a spot that had this view of the Newport Bridge, and they wanted to incorporate it into the table numbers. I thought it would be a fun special touch if my 11-year-old daughter, their niece, did the artwork. So we found a picture online with the right view, and she set to work drawing the bridge. While she worked on the drawing, I did a 3D model of the base using Shaper 3D on my iPad Pro. The model for this we're going to be putting on our Thingiverse site and we'll link that in the description. When the model was ready, I prepared the G-code file in Cura and started printing them. After they all finished printing, I sanded them off camera with a little help from the bride and groom and then spray painted them with a gold spray paint. Alright, so now it's time to figure out how we're going to wire these together. So we're just going to draw out a quick little diagram with our electrical components to see if we can make it make sense. Alright, we have two LED lights a battery, and a toggle switch to turn the lights on and off. To wire these, we need a positive going to both of the LEDs and then down to the switch. We are then going to need a positive coming from the other side of the switch and going to the battery. We are also going to need a negative going to both LEDs and then down to the battery. To put these together, since we're doing so many of them, I'm going to use Wago connectors to save a lot of time on soldering, but you could solder all of these joints as well. So now we're just going to need to solder our components with the lead wires and then we'll be able to just kind of drop everything into place in the box. I started by laying out the components and putting together the LED lights. I find that it's easier to solder the LED lights on if I braid the wire first and then insert the lead wire that's attached to the light. This helps to hold it in place while I solder it together. I also use this handy soldering gun that has a trigger fed solder wire. I then added a heat shrink tube and repeated this process with both the negative wire and the second light. I then prepared the battery case by putting the positive and the negative lead on and repeated this on the switch as well. I put the Wago connectors into the box using 5 minute epoxy and then secured the LED lights into the holes using hot glue. I then inserted the switch and put the wiring together in the connectors. And I'll have a diagram for this with the Thingiverse files as well. And good news, it worked. One down, 16 to go.
In the meantime, Sarah put the finishing touches on the drawing and Brooke prepared it for the laser cutting using the Adobe Capture app to convert the paper drawing into an SVG file. She then put it into Adobe Illustrator to add the details and ran the first one to check the settings. It fit great, so we started lasering the rest of them. And when those finished printing, it was time for the final assembly. The masking was removed and the acrylic was put into the slot in the basis. I designed these with a fairly tight tolerance, so for some of them I did need to use a mallet to tap it into place. Overall, I think this project came out great. I'm really happy with the sleek, elegant look. The illumination is not too bright, but at nighttime it really stands out, and this base would also make a fantastic nightlight base. You could engrave any number of things, from butterflies and flowers to fairies and whatever else you wanted to do. If you want to try this project, I am linking the design for the base on our Thingiverse account down in the description, so be sure to check that out. And we'd love to see any creations that you make with it, so be sure to tag us on Instagram. If you found this video helpful, then please go ahead and click subscribe. Until next time, I'm Michael, and this is Maker's Workshop.